Right, so I'm now getting ready to put the uh, cylinder barrels, pistons, cylinder head, etc. back on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some oil into the crankcases now that they're all uh, sealed up. And uh, what have I got? I've got Morris Lubricants Golden Film uh, running in oil. Basically, oil. Okay, what oil do you use, etc. Well, I always use a classic 2050 oil. I use Morris that's available, but to my mind, I use any classic 2050 oil. That's what I use. I'm not saying that's the best. I'm not recommending it, but that's what I use. And I do use the running in oil um, for a newly built engine because it's going to be the oil is going to be changed anyway after a couple hundred miles. Uh, and just to give it every the engine every possible chance of, of running properly and not burning oil, which is the main thing when it comes to a, a triple. So I'm just going to pour this into the uh, crankcases. Ooh, yum, yum. Uh, I'm going to get it everywhere. I'll, I'll put some again on. There's going to be some. Uh, I'm going to put uh, uh, assembly lube on the on all the uh, camshaft lobes, etc. But what I'm doing is when I'm putting this point this in so that when the engine starts, there'll already be oil in the sump ready to pump oil straight up to the rocker boxes, etc. Uh, otherwise, uh, and also obviously to splash around inside the crankcases. Otherwise, it'll be a while before oil builds up in the sump and uh, a while longer before oil gets to the top end of the engine. So... That's why I'm pouring oil in here. Um, how much? Well, if you pour too much in, it will come out of the. Uh, it will it will come out of the uh, various main bearings. So you know, if it starts coming out of there, then you know you put too much in. Can you see where I'm pouring? Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, so I haven't got much. I'm going to just finish finish off the rest of this. Uh, there we go. Right, I'm now getting ready to. Uh, Put the pistons on the uh, con rod so what i've started to do is i've started to fit the uh, piston rings to the pistons a um, couple of things to know i i use in this case i've got mgo pistons i don't think it matters that much what pistons you use uh, what does matter is what piston rings you use in my case these are omega piston rings and there's also gertz rings Goethe rings and those are the two rings that I recommend triples triple engines have a reputation unfortunately for burning oil uh, you know smoke uh, gray smoke coming out the back of the exhaust and that's generally uh, allied to smoking from the barrels that the, the rings haven't seated properly and so the engine smokes so you want to have try everything you, you can do to stop them smoking and the best thing is have a really good high quality rebore or hone on the cylinders and high quality piston rings okay so uh, i've started to actually fit the rings to the pistons and i've got a bespoke piston ring fitting tool here which opens the ring and allows you to slip them on and i don't use it no i don't use it because i don't trust it because there's no feel and i just don't want those rings to snap so i just use the dear old thumbnails open them out and put them down okay so we've got the three rings we've got this the oil control ring we've got the second compression ring and the top compression ring it tells you which groove they go in but then you've also got a little piece of paper that comes with the rings and it tells you which way up they go now it's a bit strange these for the i'm a bit annoyed with the omega rings which is what i've got it's because they should really have a little stamping on the ring so like where the jaws are you would normally have a little kind of engraving stamp that would say top but on these uh, on these rings you don't now generally to my mind if you don't have the word top stamped on the ring it doesn't matter which way up they go but in this case it does it matters which way up the oil control ring goes, which way up the first, the second compression ring goes. It doesn't matter in this case which way up the first top ring goes, because the top ring is uniform. In other words, it's exactly the same 
I'm trying to focus this. It's exactly the same either way up. There's no difference. Uh, there's no bevel on the edges, nothing like that. Okay, so that's fine. It doesn't matter which way up this goes. However, the second ring has got a step in it. You see that edge? Yeah. Every time I move, then it refocuses. Come on. It's got uh, this little step on the edge, and that step goes uh, to the bottom. Okay, and there's no step on that side, but there's nothing that says top on the ring. But what's good news is, of course, it does tell you on the instructions. Okay, then I nearly fell foul of this one was the um, the oil control ring. Uh, it, in some cases, according to this uh, instruction, it matters which way up they go. Well, when I looked at it, I thought it didn't really matter because I, I didn't think that uh, there was any difference. And you probably won't be able to see it now, and I'm sure I can't get the focus to work properly that close. But when I put this under a microscope, microscope, magnifying glass, you probably won't be able to see it. I, can't, I won't be able to focus it properly in the... Uh, uh, but you might just see it there. There is actually, uh, it is a difference. The uh, on, on the left, there's a slight uh, bevel on this edge. And this edge is flat. Okay, I needed to put it under a magnifying glass, but it is definitely beveled. So the beveled edge goes to the top and the flat edge to the bottom. So... If it had just said top on the damn ring in the first place, I'd have been, I'd have, you know, be, be certain. Because I've literally had to use a magnifying glass, but there is definitely a bevel to, on one side and not on the other. So that bevel goes to the top. So do double, double check. Then in case, uh, in the case of the oil ring, you put the uh, spring in first and then put the oil ring on top. The only thing to note is where the, where the spring sort of joins and make sure that it's at the opposite side to the piston to the gap in the ring. You don't want the, the two gaps lining up. Okay, so I'm going to put the, I'm now going to ease these last three rings onto the last piston, uh, and then we'll be ready to fit the pistons onto the uh, comrods. Right, the rings are now all fitted, hopefully in the right groove, and hopefully the right way up, according to the instructions. And we're now going to fit them to the comrods. The thing to note about the pistons is that they only go one way round. If you look at the uh, valve cutaways on the crown of this piston, you'll see the one nearest the bottom of the picture is slightly bigger than the one the cutaway at the top. That's because the inlet valve inlet valves are slightly bigger, so the cutaway is bigger. So the cutaway at the bottom goes towards the inlet valve, and the cutaway at the top goes towards the exhaust. So in other words, the small cutaway towards the front of the engine the big cutaway towards the back of the engine. Okay. Uh, I've also fitted the piston rings so the gaps. Uh, I've fit, fitted them at sixty degrees around the edge. So there's one gap there, one gap there, one gap there. So they're positioned at different places around the piston. To be honest, it, I don't think it makes that much difference because as soon as the, the engine starts, the piston rings slowly spin. But I think it's always good to start with them at op different openings uh, anyway. Obviously, you don't want them all in line, um, but just be aware that piston rings do spin uh, in, in the engine as it goes along, but always good to start the gaps at 60 degrees. Sorry, 120 degrees to each other, not 60 degrees, 120 degrees to each other. Okay, time to fit the pistons to the Conrod. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of the two circlips uh, <clears throat> into the groove in the uh, pistons. Um, I've double checked the uh, circlips and uh, they're, ra it's round they're rounded on both sides. So that means they can go in either way around. Uh, and uh, when I put them in, the only thing to do is to make sure, uh, I was going to say, to make sure that the... Uh, uh, sorry, think of three things at once to make sure that the gap in the in the clip doesn't line up with a gap in the piston. But there is no gap in these pistons where the groove is, so uh, um, that's uh, that's irrelevant. Normally, uh, the, just about here, there's normally a sort of cutaway in the piston uh, skirt, and uh, you want to make sure that the open 
open portion of the circlip doesn't line up with that gap. But uh, with these pistons, there's no uh, there's no cutaway, so the circlips can go in uh, wherever. And the next thing I'm going to do is just give the uh, piston just a gentle heat, not too much, just gentle heat to allow the gudgeon pin or wrist pin, as the Americans would say, uh, to slide in easily. Okay, so just not not too hot, just just give the pistons a bit of bit of heat. And now I'm going to put assembly a bit of assembly lube on the bearing surfaces, so on the uh, piston uh, bearings on the uh, gudgeon pin and also on the small end of the con rod. Okay, I'm going to uh, see if I can uh, slide the gudgeon pin in. It goes in nicely now that's warm. So I can line it up. Do the middle, middle one first, obviously. And all done, and all I'm going to do now is <clears throat> insert the circlip in the other end. I've already obviously put it in that end. Uh, have I hang on, hang on a minute? Have I put the piston in the right way around? I forgot to check the piston. No, I've put the piston in backwards. There, piston now in the uh, correct way with the big cutaway to the back to go with the inlet valve and the smaller cutaway at the front to go with the exhaust valve. Yeah, and I'm going to put the circlip in the other side, but before I do that, I'm going to stuff uh, rag and that round the uh, entrance to the crankcases so that if that damn circlip pings off, it's not going to go down the crankcase. Okay, I've uh, Sealed off the top of the crankcases so that if this little flipping circlip decides to ping off, as sometimes they do, then uh, it won't disappear down inside the crankcases, which is where you really don't want it. There we go. And what we're going to do then is we're going to double treble check that the circlips on both sides are fully in. Absolutely fully in their grooves. You really don't want those circlips coming out. Look at that, that's a nice, nice small end. Beautiful. Now just double check the other end. And there, that's the first piston on, actually round the right way. Double check that, yeah, big, big cut out to the back. That's great, first piston's in. I'm gonna now turn the engine over bit by bit and do, obviously now I'll repeat with the other pistons. And there we go, all pistons uh, now fitted. Just double check they are actually around the right way. <clears throat> yep, yeah, the uh, large cutouts to the rear, smaller cutouts to the front. And uh, just protecting them you know, with that towel just to stop them catching the crankcases. And so next I will prepare the um, cylinder barrels, ready to put the cylinder barrels down uh, <coughs> onto the... Uh, onto the crankcases. And just by the by, you know, I said I, I put that oil in the crankcases and uh, sure enough, I over, I did overdo it. And uh, um, so it's come, it's come dripping out, but um, that's fine. You know, it has just run, run out and I've just caught it. So, but I know that there's some oil in the, uh, in the cases now, but uh, yes, you can <laughs> overfill them. Right, anyway, get ready to, sort the barrels out ready for fitting.